An open box with a square base must have a volume of 32,000 cubic centimeters. Determine the dimensions of the box that will minimize the amount of material used. So the goal in this problem is to find a minimum. So we're looking for a minimum and we want to minimize the amount of material used. So if you can imagine we were making this box, let's say out of cardboard, then the amount of cardboard that we would use that would be measured as a surface area. So we're really trying to minimize the surface area in this case. That's gonna be our goal. And I always like to start by writing down what the actual goal is. So the goal is to minimize surface area. And then I'm always gonna to go to a diagram, if possible. Try to draw a diagram for the scenario. So we have an open box and it says it has a square base. So be careful here because oftentimes when we discuss situations like this, it's really common for people to make the mistake and, and assume incorrectly that the box has to be a cube just because it has a square base. But I'll remind you, this doesn't say that it has to be a cube. It just says that the base at the bottom is square. So this box actually could be quite tall, and yet it would still have a square base. So I'm going to redraw my diagram so that it's not a cube, just because I don't want that to be misleading. I don't want to make the mistake and assume that it's a cube. So I want you to go ahead and draw a box that has a square base, but try to draw it so that it does not look like a cube. So once you have your box drawn, then we want to go ahead and label, um, label the unknowns. You know, what, what do we not know about this box? I do know it has a square base, but I don't know the length of each side of the base. So you could certainly use B if you wanted to. I hesitate using B's because sometimes my B's get confused and start to look at, look like other, um, other numbers like sixes. So I'm, I'm just going to use X for the length of each side of the base. And since it is a square and all four sides are the same, then both the, uh, the length and the width will both be marked as X. However, the height of this box, which is also unknown, that needs a variable name as well. And you could use Y if you wanted, you could use H. I'm gonna use H for height but you could use any letter that you want. Just don't use X because if you use X again, you are assuming that all of the edges are the same length and that it is a cube, which we don't know for sure that it is a cube in this scenario. So now let's talk surface area. So I'm just going to use A for surface area. We need to figure out the surface area of the box, which means we're taking the area of all of the different faces and adding them together. So, it might help you to actually draw what is called a net. A net is basically a pattern for this three-dimensional shape if you were to open it up and lay it flat. So if you can imagine we have a square base and then we have a rectangle on the back side that makes up the back side of the box. We have an equivalent size rectangle on the front and then we'll have another rectangle on the far right and another one here on the far left. And this is basically a pattern to make this box. So I'm gonna label, I have the base, which is X by X. You could technically say it's X on all four sides if you wanted to. And then we have, for example, the front side of the box. So I'm gonna highlight that in red. So the front side of the box is this rectangle here, which would match up with this rectangle down here in the net. So notice the front side of the box is a rectangle that has a base of X and a height of H. So if I were to label H in my net, it would belong here. Or you could also draw it here. Let me show you one other side. Let's say the right-hand side of this box, which I am outlining in blue, that would correspond with this rectangle here in the net. And the right-hand side of the box is a rectangle with a base of X as well as a height of H. So once again, you could also put H in your diagram down here for the net. So we're looking to add together the area of all of the rectangles, and there are five all together. Remember, it's an open box, so we are not having a lid. 
So if we start with the base, which is a square, the base of the square would be, uh, excuse me, the area of that square would be x squared. So x squared is the area of the base. And then we would add that to the area of the sides. But if we take a look at the, let's say the front face, which was a rectangle that had a base of x and a height of h, the area is x times h, but the back is a congruent rectangle that has the same area. And then in this case, the blue rectangle, which is on the far right, it also has an area of x times h, as does the left-hand side. So we have four all together when you add up the area the areas of all four of the rectangles that make the sides of the box. So this is our surface area equation. And you'll notice that it has too many inputs. We have an input of X as well as an input of H. And that's no good. We wanna have one input and we wanna have one output in order to find a minimum surface area. So we're gonna reread the question and we're gonna search for what I call a constraint. And we're going to write a constraint equation, something that we're limited by in this problem. So let's reread. An open box with a square base must have a volume of 32,000 cubic centimeters. So we are restricted. We have to have a volume of 32,000. No less, no more. We're trying to get that magical volume and determine then what dimensions are going to produce that volume. So the volume is our constraint in this case. So we're going to have our volume equal to 32,000. So now let's think about how do you compute the volume of a box. This is a rectangular prism. And volume is going to be length times width times height. So in this case, the way ours is labeled, that would be x times x times h. In other words, x squared h will equal that volume of 32,000. And now we want to just solve for one of these variables, whichever is easiest. In this case, it would be easier to solve for h by dividing by x squared. So h equals 32,000 divided by x squared. I always like to put a box around this equation because this is a good relationship between the two variables, x and h. And then we're going to substitute that into our surface area equation. And that will eliminate one of these variables. So now we'll have area is equal to x squared plus 4x times our new quantity for h, which was 32,000 divided by x squared. Let's simplify a bit. We'll have x divide out with one of the x's in the denominator, leaving us with area is equal to x squared plus 128,000 over x. So this is our area model. It has one input and one output, which is great because now we have a function that we can actually minimize. We can find the minimum of this function. So to find the minimum, we're going to utilize our first derivative and we need to compute the derivative of this area function. So if I leave it in its current form, you might think to do the quotient rule on the 128,000 over x, but I'd really like to avoid that if possible. So I think it's going to be wiser to rewrite 128,000 over x as 128,000 times x to the negative first power. Because by rewriting this, now we have avoided the quotient rule. The derivative of x squared will just be 2x, and then the derivative of 128,000 x to the negative first power will be negative 128,000 x to the negative two. So this is gonna be a, an easier form area function to work with to get our first derivative. And now we want to find those critical numbers. So once again, I'm going to manipulate my derivative just a little bit more. And the reason I'm thinking to do this is because I have a negative exponent here and I would prefer not to have negative exponents. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2x minus 
128,000 over x squared. And I'm even going to go one step further and get a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply by x squared on the top and the bottom so I can get this common denominator. And now I'm rewriting my derivative as one big fraction. So that's going to be 2x cubed minus 128,000 all divided by x squared. Now this is just my preference. I always like to get one big fraction if possible because then when I am finding my critical numbers, it makes the process slightly easier. So critical numbers are found by setting the derivative equal to zero and also looking to find where the derivative would be undefined. And the reason why this makes this process easier is because if I set this entire fraction equal to zero, 2x cubed minus 128,000, all divided by x squared is equal to zero. My very first step would be to multiply both sides by x squared. But zero times x squared is still going to just be zero. So that's really an unnecessary step. You'll notice when we have a fraction and we're trying to set that fraction equal to zero, we really only need the numerator. So that's another benefit of having a big fraction. You really just need the numerator equal to zero. And then when we're looking where the derivative is undefined, that's when we'll use the denominator because we can't have division by zero, so we'll set the denominator equal to zero. So now we need to solve 2x cubed minus 128,000 equals zero. So we'll add that 128,000 over. I'm going to divide by two at the same time. So x cubed is equal to 64,000. Then we'll take the cube root of both sides, which works out quite nicely in this case, and x will equal 40. On the other side, we're solving x squared equals zero, so when we square root both sides, we'll get x equals zero. So these are our critical numbers, which we will take and do a, the first derivative test on. We will test around these critical numbers so we can take a look at the sign of the derivative and decide whether or not we have a maximum or a minimum. Now in the context of this problem, remember what x was. x, looking at your diagram, it was the length of the, the base, the square base. So because x is a length, Negative values don't really make sense, so I'm going to cross those out because there's really no need to test anything smaller than zero. So when we go to test, we just need to test a number between zero and 40. I'll test one, and then a number larger than 40. Any number will do. I'm going to choose 41. And remember, we're testing this back into our derivative. So when I substitute one back into my derivative, the numerator is going to be negative, and the denominator, the x squared, that will always be positive. So we'll have a negative divided by a positive, which results in a negative. However, when I plug in 41 to the derivative, now the numerator is going to be positive. Again, the denominator is always positive because it was x squared, so we end up with a positive. So when the derivative is negative, that means the function is decreasing. And then when the derivative is positive, that means the function is increasing. So that means that we have a minimum here at 40, which was exactly what we were looking for. We were trying to minimize surface area. So we have a minimum at 40. Now let's go back and reread the problem and be sure that we're answering the actual question. So this question said, determine the dimensions of the box that will minimize the amount of material used. So if you look at your diagram, the dimensions are going to be the x, the x, and the h. In other words, the length, the width, and the height. Those are going to be the dimensions. So what we have found here, we found the value of x. We have x is equal to 40. So Looking at the units, because the volume was measured in 32,000 cubic centimeters, this is going to be 40 centimeters. 
So that's the length of the square base. It's going to be a 40 by 40 square. But we still need to find h. We need to find the height. So taking a look again at your previous work way up here, you'll notice that your height equation was right here. It was the constraint. So the height will always be 32,000 divided by x squared. But we just found that x was 40, so we'll divide that by 40 squared to get the corresponding height. So in this case, my height is going to be 20, 20 centimeters. So the dimensions that are actually going to minimize the amount of material used will be 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters by 20 centimeters. These will be the dimensions of the box and that will give us a perfect volume of 32,000 cubic centimeters, but it will use the least amount of material possible.